Hello, everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. General Hospital Thursday, June 13 Recap Franco's brain tumor case haunts Diane. Curtis News stuns Heather. General Hospital, GH Spoilers Recap for Thursday, June 13, reveals that Tracy Quartermain, Jane Elliott, joined Stella Henry, Vernie Watson, on Gregory Chase's Gregory Harrison Memorial Bench, so Tracy confessed to thinking about what might have been with Gregory. Stella was dealing with a similar situation since she got the news that her former love, Marcus, passed away, and now she was thinking about the life she didn't get to have with him. At Christina Corinthos Davis, Kate Mancy apartment, she admitted she also thought about what it'd be like if she were having this baby with Blaze Aka Allison, Allie Rogers, Jacqueline Grace Lopez. Blaze and Christina let themselves get swept up in imagining their new house and the family they could have. But Christina ultimately suggested it wasn't the right time to consider all this. Next Molly Lansing Davis, Kristen Vaginos, showed up to vent about the huge blow-up she just had with T.J. Ashford, Taj Bellow, so Christina figured out it happened because she was the surrogate. After Molly highlighted her communication issues with T.J., she calmed down and acted like everything would work out. Once her sister left, Christina began worrying about what her rights and obligations to this baby would be if Molly and T.J. split up. At the Invader, Alexis Davis, Nancy Lee Gran, bickered with Adrian Duet, Dieterich Gray, about his article, trashing Laura Collins, Jeannie Francis, and answered Diane Miller's, Carolyn Hennessy, questions in private, soon after. Although Laura was merely looking into Heather Weber's, Allie Mills, court records at this point, Alexis acknowledged that there were legal precedents that could lead to her case being reopened. In fact, Alexis mentioned a precedent that Diane set herself, specifically in the case of the State of New York versus Robert Frank Aka Franco Baldwin, Roger Howarth. Diane was horrified as she realized that by pushing for Franco's release using a brain tumor defense, she may have made it easier for Heather to score her own freedom due to Kobel poisoning. In Laura's office, she assured Trina that the article in The Invader misrepresented things since she was just looking into Heather's court records. Even so, Trina was concerned about the possibility of Heather walking free after all her terrible crimes. Once Kevin Collins, John Lindstrom, arrived, he offered updates on The Invader's promo about Trina's interview against Laura. Trina swore that she gave no such interview, so Laura believed her. After Trina got Kevin's take on Heather's faulty hip situation, she admitted Portia Robinson, Brick Care, was kicking herself for pushing for the replacement. Once Laura was alone with Kevin, she made it clear that despite all the backlash, she believed Heather deserved to be treated fairly based on all the facts related to her case. At Pentonville, Heather realized she had a mystery man visiting her and complimented his good looks before asking who he was. Curtis Ashford, Donald Turner, shared his name and revealed that he was Trina's father. Heather got choked up and wasn't sure what to say about all the pain she caused. Curtis wondered what Heather's intentions were for Trina if she hadn't been arrested, but Heather couldn't be certain. After Heather made an emotional apology about her confusion over trying to protect her daughter, she acknowledged that she had to live with the memories of picking up that hook and using it. Curtis suspected maybe Heather was practicing for when her case was reopened, but she seemed genuinely surprised that was even a possibility. Heather insisted she talk to Laura and shut it down since she was right where she belonged. General Hospital spoilers say Heather could get another chance in court despite her view right now, so we'll pass along any other predictions on her legal fate. On a balmy Thursday in June, the residents of Port Charles found themselves ensnared in a web of tension and surprise as the latest events unfolded on General Hospital. 
The day was particularly charged for Diane Miller and Franco Baldwin, both grappling with the echoes of Franco's past medical crisis, while Curtis Ashford's startling news left Heather Weber reeling. The day began with Diane Miller, the sharp and formidable attorney, revisiting Franco Baldwin's brain tumor case. Franco, who had once been a notorious artist with a dark streak, had undergone a transformation after his brain tumor was discovered and removed. Despite this, the shadow of his past actions, supposedly driven by the tumor, continued to loom over him. Diane, known for her meticulous attention to detail, was haunted by the complexities and moral ambiguities of the case. As she pored over the legal documents, she couldn't help but feel a pang of empathy for Franco. Was he truly absolved of his past misdeeds because of the tumor, or did some deeper, darker part of his psyche still linger beneath the surface? Meanwhile, Franco himself was struggling with these very questions. Sitting in his art studio, surrounded by canvases, both finished and abandoned, he was lost in thought. His wife Elizabeth watched him from the doorway, concern itched across her face. Penny for your thoughts, she asked softly, stepping into the room. Franco looked up, his eyes clouded with doubt. Just thinking about everything. The tumor, what I did, who I was. Elizabeth moved closer, placing a reassuring hand on his shoulder. You are not that person anymore, Franco. The tumor changed everything. You're a good man. But what if? Franco started, but he couldn't finish the sentence. The what-ifs plagued him, a never-ending source of anxiety. Across town, Curtis Ashford had news that would send shockwaves through the community. Curtis, always the bearer of unexpected twists, had uncovered information that would dramatically alter the lives of several Port Charles residents. With a sense of urgency, he made his way to Heather Weber, a woman known for her own tangled history and unpredictable nature. Heather was in her usual haunt, the Shady Brook Mental Facility, where she had been residing for years. Her reputation for cunning schemes and erratic behavior made her a formidable figure, even in confinement. Curtis approached her with caution, fully aware that this news could tip the balance of her precarious mental state. Heather, Curtis began, his tone serious and measured. I have something important to tell you. Heather looked up, her eyes gleaming with curiosity and a hint of madness. Oh, Curtis, you always bring the most interesting tidbits. What is it this time? Curtis took a deep breath, steadying himself. It's about Franco. There's something you need to know. Heather's interest peaked immediately. Franco, her biological son, had always been a complicated subject for her. Go on, she urged, leaning forward. Curtis explained the latest developments with Franco's case, the lingering doubts about the influence of the brain tumor, and the ongoing legal and psychological evaluations. Heather listened intently, her expression shifting from curiosity to shock and then to a strange, almost predatory satisfaction. Well, well, Heather said slowly, a twisted smile forming on her lips. It seems my dear Franco's story isn't quite over yet, is it? Curtis watched her carefully, wary of the unpredictable ways Heather might react. I thought you should know, considering your connection to him. Heather's smile widened. Oh, Curtis, you have no idea how valuable this information is to me. Franco's fate could be very interesting indeed. Meanwhile, back at General Hospital, the corridors buzzed with the usual activity. Nurses and doctors moved briskly, attending to patients and handling the myriad emergencies that arose. Amidst this organized chaos, Dr. Kevin Collins was deep in discussion with Dr. Terry Randolph about Franco's ongoing treatment and psychological state. Franco's case is unique, Kevin remarked. The removal of the tumor certainly changed his behavior, but the trauma and guilt associated with his past actions continue to affect him deeply.